We were down 10 to 12, and I was going out on the pass route, and the ball was coming, and the defensive back had grabbed me by my jersey. So when I was going for the ball, my foot stuck in the turf, and my leg twisted. And then when I tried to get back up, I fell down again. It was very painful. Ten years ago, the knee injury suffered by Eric Stevens at the beginning of his junior year in high school would have meant the end of football for this young athlete and probably the pain of a football knee for the rest of his life. Though Eric's injury occurred while playing football, serious knee injuries can occur to the amateur or the athlete in almost any sport, from basketball, running, and baseball, to jumping, volleyball, and tennis. Football, basketball, and baseball, however, have the highest frequency of acute knee injuries due to inherent higher risk and the increased number of participants. In all sports, the mechanism of injury is basically the same. The most common mechanism is a non-contact injury. And in the non-contact injuries, many times this can occur by the athlete simply planting their foot and twisting, either in internal or external rotation. Uh, a secondary form of injury is a contact injury, and that's when the athlete may get a blow, say, to the side of the knee, or what we call the lateral side of their knee, and then that will cause the ligaments on the medial side to potentially tear. Uh, consequently, when this happens, the medial collateral ligament can tear, possibly the medial meniscus, and sometimes the anterior cruciate ligament. We do know we can help prevent injuries by the way the athlete cuts. If the athlete is running down the field and wants to cut to the left, it is better to plant the right foot, turn the body in the direction of the cut, meaning left, and then push off. This is opposed to a crossover cut where the athlete runs down the field and in preparation of cutting to the left, they bring their right leg over their left leg. Whether the result of a blow or a turning maneuver that twists the knee, the rupture of the medial collateral ligament, the meniscus tear, and the rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament make up what orthopedists commonly call O'Donohue's unhappy triad of knee injuries. Though possible rupture of the posterior capsule and posterior cruciate ligament should never be ignored, the triad remains the most common in athletics. Within the triad, the anterior cruciate rupture, which often includes hemothrosis, is the most potentially debilitating. All three require smart and decisive work on the part of team physicians and trainers from the moment the timeout is called. The number one thing to remember is there is plenty of time. The, the time is out, you need to get the other athletes away from the area, and then you need to assess the patient. When you assess the patient, you look at their airway, breathing, circulation, make sure there's no spinal cord injury. After you get the athlete under control, you can then ask them the history of what happened. Many times they may tell you in a knee, for example, that there was a pop, and that's very important. If the athlete says there was a pop in the knee, there's a high chance he may have ruptured the anterior cruciate ligament or possibly another ligament in his knee. There is a golden period in examining that knee, and I feel it's right at the time after the injury. The number one test to do would be the Lachman test. And then do the varus and valgus instability test And also, do not forget to do the posterior drawer test. After we've evaluated the patient, we have assessed that they are stable, either to walk off with assistance or on a stretcher that is performed. We then take the athlete to the sidelines in order to further assess the situation. I think what's very important that at any point in the examination process, either on the field or in the bench or in the training room, there is a positive test, we remember that, because that definitely showed ligamentous laxity. If that test is obviated later, it may be because of muscle spasm. Ultimately, the player's football future comes down to the severity of his knee injuries and the treatment options available to him. Knee ligament injuries are classified in terms of degree, First degree indicates a less than 50% tear. 
Treatment is symptomatic. Disability is usually slight and temporary. Second degree indicates a greater percentage of tearing, depending on the ligament involved. Treatment is protective. Disability, while significant, is temporary. Third degree injuries are readily defined as complete ruptures with demonstrable instability. Treatment is operative restoration, and the degree of disability is dependent on a number of variables. Once physician and trainer have determined on field that a knee injury has occurred or is suspected, radiographs, MRIs, arthrograms, and or CTs must be taken to confirm the degree of injury and dictate treatment. Radiographs do not usually allow direct visualization of injured ligaments or tendons unless they are surrounded by fat. Most commonly, the radiograph of a knee that has injured ligaments is completely normal. The bony outline is normal. So we have to look for very subtle findings. There may be small avulsions or flakes of bone in different areas. One of those specific areas for the anterior cruciate ligament is the lateral tibial plateau area. This has been called the Sagan sign or lateral capsular sign. Arthrograms are particularly useful in evaluating whether a meniscus tear is the cause of pain lingering for several weeks after a medial collateral ligament tear. MRIs are perhaps the most specific indicator of meniscal and ligament damage. A normal meniscal shadow is seen here in the anterior horn, which is a dark colored triangle. Here in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, you can see tearing going from the inferior articular surface to the superior articular surface. In this case, the posterior cruciate ligament can be seen here as a well-defined structure. The anterior cruciate ligament, in contrast, is absent. The MRI will also show subtle differences in signal intensity within the ligament, such as seen in this case where the ligament looks grayer than normal, particularly in reference to the dark posterior cruciate ligament. This is indicative of a first or second degree sprain or tear of the ligament, possibly a complete rupture of the ligament that is still in place. Sometimes an irregular outline or loss of the normal contour of the anterior cruciate ligament can be seen, and this is indicative of injury to the anterior cruciate ligament. When determining the degree of injury sustained to the anterior cruciate ligament, a radiologist can usually obtain optimal visualization with sagittal images taken with an extremity coil and a high-resolution magnet. A normal ACL will appear as a well-defined structure of low intensity through the intercondylar notch. Having evaluated the patient with a combination of palpation, radiographs, arthrograms, and MRIs, final diagnostic confirmation can be made by arthroscopy. But by the time the patient undergoes surgery, the practitioner, using these methods, will know with some degree of certainty what the arthroscope will show. Once the particular injury and degree are confirmed, treatment options can be considered. The first step is to evaluate the goals of the patient. If the athlete has no further desire to engage in cutting and turning sports or is diagnosed with a first-degree injury, a non-surgical option can be chosen. Some second-degree injuries can be treated in this manner, which involves bracing the knee and beginning rehabilitation one to two days after injury. A third-degree injury will usually require one of the surgical options. For ACL reconstruction, these primarily include the open method, the arthroscopic standard method and the arthroscopic endoscopic method. For Eric Stevens, the diagnosis was complete rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament. Treatment was surgical repair by arthroscopic endoscopic methods. Rehabilitation kept him out of football for a season. But when the once-in-a-lifetime season came along, Eric Stevens was on the field with his teammates, achieving not only his personal goal, but becoming a sports medicine success story. Yeah.